Someone has died on the nine month cruise. So you could get a call if you're like a Royal Caribbean worker, like it's your job to wheel this down. A hundred percent. And they didn't actually find the person that was passed away on the cruise until two days later. Sometimes cruises will just sort of randomly throw ice cream parties and you're like, that's crazy. They're like trying to get rid of all this ice cream. And that's because they're trying to put another person inside of the walk-in fridge and they need to make room. Hello everyone, welcome back to Closet Talk. I am your host, Maddie Westbrook, and today my fabulous guest is Mark Sebastian. He is recently known for blowing up for being on the nine month cruise. You're only on there for 18 days? 18 nights. 18 nights. But he's also known for other impeccable things on TikTok. Terrible things. No, they're great. I watched your recap video of like things that you had done, mm, yes. and I was like, I remember every single one of those things. That's like the video for you to watch if you wanted to see like yeah. what I've done on yeah. TikTok. Yeah, I've had a lot of weird videos blow up. They're great though. Thank you. Um, I mean, one of them resulted in someone getting arrested. Not my fault. No, that wasn't definitely entirely not my fault, fault. at all. Really? No, it's not. No, no. It's not like you directly went up to one person and was like, "Do this." No, I went up to like five million <laughs> and was like, "You should write your enemy's phone number on keychains and sort of throw them all about and see what happens." Do you know the story of what happened when somebody did that? I only know the story because the police department reached out to me and told me about the impact that this video was having, and I was like, "That seems like a you guys problem." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're reaching out to me. I just sort of like provided the idea, um, and it was like really. A very simple, easy idea. It wasn't like it was so crazy. It was no. just like, I don't know. I thought the other ones were worse. Like, I also did a video where you sent literal animal sh in the mail. And I was yeah. surprised that they weren't pissed off about that one. But then I had the guy who ran the site, poopsenders.com, reach out to me um, and was like, hey, how do we get you to go viral again? And I was like, I don't know. Like, also, where are you getting this like, where, do you have, like, a farm? Did you know that there was somebody out there shipping poop? Uh, yeah, I did. Back in early days of TikTok, I was very much about revenge tips, right? Like, one of my first videos that yeah. blew up was all about me telling people's exes to deal their exes' remotes. Uh, and then that was the first video that sort of went crazy and got, like, 10 million views. Then the next one was um, having people sign up for the Scientology mailing list. I almost accidentally was converted into a Scientologist once. Well, why don't we unpack that? <laughs> we can. Now, when you say accidentally, tell me more. I was 18 and I was in college and I had never experienced the world. I grew up in a bubble, didn't have full access to the internet until I was 18, no phone. We wandered into downtown Portland in Oregon. Portland? They got shooters in Portland? They got shooters <laughs> my God. everywhere okay. on every corner. And I was like, Oh my gosh, a free personality test? You know, like they got me like that. Mm. And you know, we were both dumb and we walked in the front door and it smelled like Disneyland. Everything was like clean <laughs> and they were so nice. They were dressed like little flight attendants. Uh -huh. Like they were so disarming. 100%. And if there's one thing a queer person love, it's anything that can tell us more about our personality. Yeah. And anybody wearing like a nice tie. Like mm. there was a pattern on it and mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for a pattern. He like shadowed us as we walked through it was like a gallery of tv screens mm. and on the screens they were like i was on meth for 20 years and mm. then i started doing scientology and i don't do meth anymore mm. it was like all like just beautiful stories of people who are now okay because of it and then i was like I want to be okay. And, and then I like wandered over to like the book section, which I think is like the Bible. Right. And I was like, I don't know what their Bible is called, but Dianetics. I was like, Oh, you know that. Uh -huh. And so I go and I open the book and I start to like, just look at it. Cause I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea what Scientology mm -hmm. was at this point. And this guy is like behind me and he goes, do you want me to read it to you? And I was like, I would not like that. Story actually, hour. Sorry. I know. And I was like, do you have like a little like, kitty corner with some popcorn where you're gonna like sit down and read to us and he goes would you like to sign up for one of our personality tests and I was like sure and so I go to the front and then I start to notice like something's like sketchy when I go to the list and like there's nobody else on the list and you like, give your real information no Oh, thank God. I gave like a completely false name, completely wrong email, and we got out of there so fast. And my friend started laughing. I was like, what's so funny? Like, why was that so funny? And she was like, she knew what was going on the whole time. She knew what Scientology was. She knew that I was like, just vulnerable, like going into this experience. They knew that too. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, dude, what's going on? She's like, it's a cult. I was like, yeah, it's a cult. For me, it's like, 
would I rather be addicted to meth for 20 years or be a Scientologist? And it's like a hard choice for me. It's a toss up. Because uh, I feel like maybe Scientology could be worse. Yeah. I watched the documentary on Netflix. Going Clear with Louis Thoreau. It was crazy. Yeah, it is really crazy. I know a lot about Scientology because my old my old roommate and like my best friend, she once did this sort of like investigative journalism case on um, a fashion company that was a front for Scientology, which I will let her break the story of it. She has like a whole thing and she discovered so much stuff about this. But also something that I have learned about is that when you write negatively about Scientology, they come after not only you, but after your animals. They kill people's dogs. Isn't that crazy? Cut this out. I have two cats and a snake at home. I know. You can't take my babies. This is also things that I've heard. They've paid social media websites to sort of push down content of like negative content about Scientology. 100% because a couple years ago when all the like influencers first started moving to LA after COVID or like during COVID. They became Scientologists? Not really. Uh So what happened was they went to a party and all got drunk. And like (gasps) I remember there was somebody I think it was Frankie Jonas. It was was Frankie Jonas and he made them them all wear a Scientology necklace. They went up to like all these like big like the biggest influencers that you could think of at the time. Uh I know the names and I'm not going to say them because some of them are my friends. Uh And they like put on this necklace because if Frankie Jonas hands you a necklace at a party and says, yo, pose with this necklace. It was also the time when people were putting on like sunglasses. Yeah. And was like taking these sunglasses to a New Year's Eve party and taking pictures of all the celebrities there. And so it was like that when that trend was going on, then he made a compilation of all these TikTokers wearing the Scientology necklace. I remember seeing that TikTok and being like, if someone came up to me and asked me to put on a necklace, I would be like, but it doesn't match. And then I would be like, (laughs) well, I spent so much time trying to figure out this outfit. It's like, now you're asking me to put in another accessory. It just feels like that. I would say no to yeah. putting on the necklace and honestly to putting on the sunglasses as well, unless it sort of went with the vibe. But I do remember that so vividly, seeing that TikTok. And then I feel like a lot of people didn't realize that it was the Scientology symbol. Yeah. Um, because I don't think a lot of people are as well versed in Scientology. I'm not a Scientologist. I want to say that yeah. now. If, you if know that too isn't, much. I know a lot about Scientology. Yeah. I actually sort of am mildly obsessed with Scientology just because like, There's something really insane about it. Also, if you ever go by the Celebrity Scientology Center, it's like that crazy building that looks like the Chateau Marmont, but is not. I want you to look at the windows. Never once have the shades of those windows been lifted. They are always closed. So you have to envision that that entire, like, castle is just dark with overhead lighting, I'm sure, which makes it even worse. Yeah, there's Um, no cute lamps in the corner. No, I... Oh, my God. If there's one thing that I feel like Scientology doesn't know, it's lighting. I feel like that would sort of be... I feel like if anyone has gotten lighting correctly, it is sort of the Catholics. They have great lighting in church. I grew up Catholic. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, they've got the stained glass. They've got the like, they've got under lighting for Jesus. Yeah. They've and got like everything. It sucks. The one religion that really sort of hates, hates the queers is like sort of the best religion for light. I know. Yeah, every church is just stunningly lit. Like, all the windows are warm tinted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, like, even the Stained overhead, glass. Hello. The, stained the glass. The most gay sort of light you can get. <laughs> it's like a window, but gay. My loves stained glass. Same. I have it, gay stained glass. Yeah. I mean, imagine, like, you don't even need, like, a light effect for a rainbow. No. It just automatically translates a rainbow there's, everywhere. There's, like, this one really good uh, queer stained glass artist called Queer Glass. And I've had him make me um, this... I have this like Vivian Westwood Seditionaries t-shirt with two cowboys whose um, things are touching. It's like a very famed uh, illustration back from 1979s and it looks incredible and everyone always comments on it. I need to like search for it. I will. I'll show you. Here. I'll. I will put you in touch with him. He's Please really, Please do. I don't really know if you talented. can see my pupils dilate, yeah, but I need that. The stained I need... glass is beautiful. It's, yeah. a, it's like a window, but gay. Have you driven by the like 50 driven. story? You don't drive. Mm. Have you passed by <laughs> whilst in a moving vehicle or by foot or by unicycle? Or by I Lime? Hello? I would ride those to work when uh, I love them. I, I biked off campus to a little market on the corner when I was in college and that was like my uh what is it, work study job. Yeah. And I would take my friend's bike and I learned how to fix bikes because this bike was so bad. Wow. The wheel would come unhinged and start <gasps> pressing into the bar so you could no longer pedal. And so I learned how to like fix the wheel and then the chain. Mm. For a week when I didn't know how to do that yet, I would take Lime and Bird scooters. I talk a lot about homosexual audacity and feeling like I can do anything because I'm gay. Uh, but when it comes to sort of anything mechanical, yeah. like a bike chain is loose, for me, in the garbage. I that yeah. I give up. Your nails not... are way too pretty for that. 
I, I agree. I just got these done. And what I feel like is going to become a trend is to sort of reverse French manicure I because it grows out that. nicely. I don't like having long nails. Long nails freak me out on any gender. No, I can't do it. If like someone is like touching me with long nails, I'm like, I can't. Really? Yeah, I don't know You've why. You've never gotten head Sensory scratches issues. from acrylics then. I, but I feel like I wouldn't love it. I feel really? like I'm not that kind of person that would. I would be like grossed out. I know, if it's a weird thing. If somebody had long nails and was like mm -hmm. giving you a head massage, yeah. it is spiritual. I don't even like those spiritual. things. You ever put those little, those little octopus oh, things? I hate those. Reverse chills. Yeah. I'm pretty sure like I accidentally need my roommate in the balls because he came up and was just like, boop. That is scary. It that's was a, That's a, a big fear of mine. Going back to the cruises. On the cruise, I, I had to get my nails done. Um, but when I tell you that the colors that they had on display, for me, homophobic. Okay. They were some of the worst colors I've ever seen. It's like they looked at a color wheel and went, what are the worst colors we can get to put on nails? Yeah. And they just sort of popped them right on. But the fact that there was a nail salon on the cruise. There's a nail salon and a hair salon as well. Was it like a mall? In a way, all cruise ships are like malls in a sort of scary way. It kind of did look like a mall. For me, it looked more like a cheesecake factory. Like a cheesecake factory, I've said it multiple times, but it was like I was on a, like in a retirement home with a cheesecake factory attached. There was like a cheesecake factory and a Chili's and it was just, they were sort of battling out who could have more influence on the interiors. Visually. Visually. Okay. And then for some reason on the top floor, there was this bar called the Vortex, which is, which was like sort of retro futurism that they just sort of threw up there, which I actually thought was quite fabulous. I was like, this is remarkable. I think that the design up here is very Memphis Milano style. Everything that was right on that cruise just had one thing that was off. I felt like that was how the whole cruise was. Okay, you seem like a big traveler, first of all. I have. I've been to all seven continents now, which is crazy. Well, I didn't get to touch down on Antarctica, but you know what? If I'm arguing whether or not I get to count Antarctica, I feel like I get to count you, Antarctica. Yeah. Nobody within the realm of people I've ever met has uh -huh. even gotten close to being semi-near Antarctica, I'm, so I'm, you can count it. I feel like there were people in my comment section being like, mm, well, you didn't step foot on it, so I don't know if you can count that. And I was like, you're in New Jersey. And that's fine. I'm from Long Island, so I can say okay. that. We're part of the tri-state area, yeah. you know? I feel like it was sort of difficult. I'm like, I'm looking at the weird Antarctic pyramids that look like mountains. I don't know. Antarctica was really crazy. It was one of the most vast, beautiful things I've ever seen in my entire life. Really? It was insane. Also... You just get to see penguins like on these icebergs. It was almost cliche. I almost wanted to tell the penguins like, it does feel like this is a little cliche. Like I don't feel like you should just sort of be on the iceberg. Did you see a polar bear? Polar bears are only in the Northern hemisphere. Penguins are only in the Southern hemisphere and never the two shall meet. A penguin has no idea what a polar bear is and a polar bear has no idea what a penguin is. A polar I mean bear has never eaten a penguin. I think I need a walk off set. This I know, is, I think crazy? this is like the craziest thing I've ever. So you're telling me if I like took a penguin, mm -hmm. freeze dried it enough for it to be cold enough to like travel mm -hmm. and then just walked up to a polar bear and was like, look at this. Yeah, it would be, be like, like, I mean, it would be like, that looks delectable. What a, what a oh, they need gorgeous it? little meal. Yes, I'm sure. I mean, cool. polar bears for bears. It's always uh, black fight back, brown lay down, white good night. If a polar bear attacks you, you're gone. That's it. I've encountered no bears in like, my life. I feel well, like you have. A certain kind. The animal bears. <laughs> no. <laughs> Other ones. You genuinely seem like I can ask you any question and you would know the answer. I know a lot about animals. Because when I was a kid, I religiously watched this show called Zoo Venture. I feel like growing up in the 90s, um, I'm aging myself. Growing up in like 2010. So, and I am so young. Almost the youngest person here, I would say. I'm I thought like, you were 25. Thank you. That's really kind. I am actually younger. Yeah. Okay. 22. We're the same age. Yes. Famously, I'm younger. I would watch the show called Zoo Venture, and it was basically like a trivia show. And I felt like as a, a young gay boy, I could pick between being really into like musical theater, right? Right. Um, being really into fashion. Course. or being into animals like as a queer person that's all you get to pick from right that's it i'm on a snake hyperfixation right i now. have a snake you have a snake banana ball python i have a western hog nose no way yeah that's crazy i got just chewed up by the reptile community because i keep mine in like a 40 gallon enclosure right now you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to apparently keep your snake in like an enclosure that's as there as long as yeah like with the side and then you add on like the side. If they're like longer than that, they need to be in a bigger one. But I posted a video of, like cleaning his like 
tank and people were so pissed at me they were like it's too small the humidity's off you don't have the right thermometer it's not the right and i was like when i first got my snake i was like okay i know that if i'm going to show this snake on on tiktok at all like they're going to eat me up so i need to make sure that i like am I, I've done well for this snake. Yeah. So I needed to make sure that I had a, an enclosure that's actually closed on three sides so that he doesn't feel like he's being attacked from all different angles. Yeah. And so I have now on three sides, it's like a, a black glass, right? Yeah. And then I can go in from the front and sort of like grab him out. Uh, and he's getting better with being handled, which is really good. Um, I've only had him for like four months now. Oh, it also is weird because, you know, dating, I feel like I've had to tell people, hey, just letting you know, like, I do have a snake if that's like a, a thing that you're going to be scared of because I've had people come to my house and like sit on my couch and then sort of look over the cage and there's just sort of like sporks like <laughs> going up and down in the front of the cage and they're like, oh my God, what's that? I did just have a, uh, a guy that I've been seeing uh, come over to like check out the snake for yeah. the first time. Um, and he hated him. And I was like, oh, God, this I don't know if this is going to work out because, like, Sporks is my – that's my son you're talking about. No, yeah. Yeah, don't talk to me or my son. Or ever, my son. Ever again. Ever again. Um, especially because he was so expensive. He is so beautiful. So I'm like – Yeah. They are we'll see. magnificent creatures. I was magnificent. sitting on the couch, like, and I watched him shed for the first time. Like, he was in his, like – there's supposed to be two hides, like a humid hide. A humid hide. And like yeah, a, mine needs three. A cool side hide. Cool side, warm side, humid. And a humid hide. Mine does I'm too. going – my God, he is a nicer place than I do. Yeah. But I watched him shed for like 45 minutes. It was <gasps> impeccable. And I was telling Carter, Carter was laughing at me the whole time, my roommate. And he was just like literally going up and down the stairs doing his thing. And I hadn't moved for like 45 minutes. I was like so enthralled. I was like, this is magnificent. Look at what he's doing. You ever see a legless lizard? Yep. When people talk about, they're always like, you know, if God was real, why is there cancer? Right? If God was real, why is there terrible things happening in the world? I'm going, if God was real, why did he make a legless lizard? It's an oxymoron. Yeah, because it just feels like, and, and if you ever see a picture of a legless lizard, it doesn't look happy. It, it no. is miserable. It, it doesn't, doesn't want to be, be there. It's like sort of wakes up every day and goes, ugh, great. Another day as a lizard who literally doesn't have legs. So now everyone confuses me as a snake. I'm not a snake. I'm actually a legless lizard because I have eyelids. My jaw isn't split. I have ear holes, but it has to sort of constantly come out as a lizard <laughs> every day. Yeah. It's sort of like, it's like a masked gay man. And, it, yeah. and life is hard for masked gay men. Yeah. It's, it's difficult. No, that's, you know? uh, that's exactly everything I was going <laughs> to Everything believe. I was going to say. Okay. Now we're done. We're done with snakes, but like I will be texting you about this. I'll send you Yes, a 100%. Picture. Okay, cruise just for like a little bit. Yeah. Because obviously you're more than a cruise. And everyone is always saying that. Yeah always um and by everyone i mean me you are though like the i loved your content on it i was telling my Thank manager you. like today you are the only series i feel like i've kept up with on tiktok in the past like year wow. was the cruise series there are people still out there on the cruise right yes and it is for nine months so they'll heard... be there until september <gasps> and it's an election year so picture that and who goes on to cruises white conservative people i was gonna say yeah so was it mostly old people the demographic of that cruise um and for the world cruisers i believe is around 75 percent of people are over the age of 65. wow i know it's really insane did you find people your age uh, the whole thing with the cruise is that there uh and the reason why it went viral is because there were some young people on there who who started creating tiktoks and their TikToks were the ones that started going viral because everyone was like, what are you doing on a nine-month cruise? That just seems strange. And me too, and my, myself as well. Um, my whole thing with the cruise started because I really wanted to get this brand deal. Uh, and they asked me to send in my numbers, like my views and stuff yeah. like that. I really wanted this, so I wanted to sort of like pad my resume of, of views. Uh, so I did a, a video about the cruise because I was like, I know this will go viral. It'll get a couple hundred thousand views. I'll be able to like submit that. I posted the video. I was like, put cameras on this cruise. Uh, where's Bravo? Why is no one doing this reality show about this cruise? Alternatively, put me on the cruise. I'll, I'll go on. Like, I'll record everything. I'll tell you everything that's going on. Joking. It was a joke that people took a little too far because <laughs> I ended up on the cruise in Antarctica. <laughs> um, and then... I went to go watch the Survivor finale. Very important Super. as a queer person to watch Survivor. Yeah, love, um, I love Survivor. I would win Survivor and that's not a good thing. Okay. I went to watch the Survivor finale. I came back, the video had 2 million views and I was like, oh, this is going viral, viral. And then there were people in the comment section being like, let's start a GoFundMe, like, let's get you on that cruise. It'll be funny. I didn't want to feel indebted to people yeah. to make content. So I was like, if there is a brand out there that wants to put me on this cruise, I would consider it. I'm letting you know now being in the middle of the ocean and being stuck somewhere where I can't go home is actually my worst nightmare. I can't do that. I've been like, oh my gosh, how cute would it be to go on a cruise with my girlfriend? No, no not actually. Cute. 
No. It's not cute. It's like you're on a floating football field just in the middle of the uh-huh. Antarctic. A football no. field. You're, I mean, some of the crews that they have on Royal Caribbean are actually just buildings. There shouldn't be something floating on the ocean that's 18 stories tall with like 17 water slides and an aqua dome. I have a question. Go. What if there's an earthquake on the water? And there's a giant tsunami? Is that what happens? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how tsunamis are usually like Could you get like started? I actually think I knew that. My roommate's super into like No, hundred percent I water. feel you. Super into water. Yeah. <laughs> Bottled or just tap? From the sky. Gotcha. Um yeah. What if you just take it out? A lot of times when tsunamis start, um, it takes a while for them to sort of like gain gusto. It's so rarely ever like giant waves. Yeah. However, that being said, obviously, when I went on to the cruise, one of the first things that people were talking about was like, oh, my God, I hope he doesn't go through the North Sea. Actually, they were saying, I want him to go through the North Sea. How funny would that be? <laughs> and then what I had to explain to people was, so the North Sea is actually up in the north, right? <laughs> Antarctica, where I was going uh, when I did find a brand deal to go with uh, a company called Atria. Um, Antarctica, famously in the south. It is. Not really near each other (laughs) but in order to get to antarctica we had to go through the drake passage which is a really famous part of the ocean that is notoriously really rocky so we were on a royal caribbean cruise ship that was built in 2003 so this cruise ship barely knows 9 11 happened right and now it's going through ice it is going through like icebergs right i'm waking up like opening the window there's icebergs but before that could happen we had to go through this crazy like I think it was like they were saying six meter high waves. The waves that you want are the waves that are coming towards the ship. So like you want waves that are coming this way. So when the ships are going through it, they're like, it's going up and down like this. And then sometimes though we had waves that were coming against the ship like this. So we were just dipping down like this. It was on the way there. They say you either get the Drake shake or the Drake lake. We got the Drake shake on the way there, the Drake lake on the way back. I did get the shot of the Drake passage, which I did have to like wait for. I had like a porthole window and I'm sitting there opening Gashapon actually. And you can see the giant wave that comes and like crashes. No, I saw the, the video. It's like within yeah. the first second, it's like the just the freaking wave. It was really crazy. But then we sort of uh, like arrived in Antarctica and I'm like opening my window to these insane icebergs i actually have never seen a blue that color it was the most blue thing i've ever seen okay it was that's all i can describe it as antarctica as a whole obviously super famously white color wise not caucasian right um the, like the actual icebergs were so blue it was like didn't you try to steal one i did well i did successfully actually um, you still have it like in a hydro flask <laughs> yes i do well so basically what they did was since we couldn't get off in antarctica this is actually so funny they went down into in a lifeboat sort of fished out an iceberg out of the antarctic sea threw it up onto the pool deck where everyone could go take photos with it. I couldn't breathe because I thought that, that was like the funniest thing ever. <laughs> also, who's they? Yeah. Oh, well, like uh, the Royal Caribbean workers, like the, the cruise director. <laughs> Imagine like getting the call I that know, morning. I know, being like, hey. Gonna... Yeah, well, they were also going to suck out the water of the pool because you know that the water in pools on cruise ships is seawater. Isn't that crazy? I, I didn't know. know. I learned that only recently. Sorry, that was, I'm rarely speechless. <laughs> that, that got me. So they wanted to suck up the water from the Antarctic Sea so that we could do polar plunges. And I was like, that sounds so fun for you guys. If I did a polar <laughs> plunge, I actually would die. All like, the old people yeah. just like I, That's why I was like, you guys would you're gonna take, freeze the you're elderly. Gonna take out half the cruise, which is really insane because there are morgues on the cruise. And someone has died on the, on the nine month cruise recently uh, within like, I think like maybe three weeks ago, someone passed away. There's a mortician? Yeah, there is not a mortician. There's just a morgue. So then they so, would take them off at the next at the next thing. So you could get a call if you're like a Royal Caribbean worker. Like it's your job to wheel this down. A hundred percent. And they didn't actually find the person that was passed away on the cruise until two days later. And on top of that, so the morgues and the cruise only have spots for two people. Sometimes cruises will just sort of randomly throw ice cream parties. And you're like, that's crazy. They're like trying to get rid of all this ice cream. And that's because they're trying to put another person inside of the walk-in fridge and they need to make room. You're telling me if you were to like Cold Stone on this cruise that you could yeah. do, you, every time you just need like a refill of strawberry daiquiri, there's just pa- a body? Yeah, well, I think that by that time they would not be having any items although who knows isn't that cross-contamination like a biohazard like a corpse next to some ice cream yeah i mean we did go through the drake passage so them having a a body in the the walk-in would not really surprise me that much but it was a very crazy thing the just sort of moving on from the dead bodies and walk-ins the iceberg i did go up so they sort of strapped it down onto the pool deck and because the boat's still rocking so it was like going all over the place they strapped it down it was up there for like pretty much the whole time i was there i was determined I love little tchotchkes. I have what I call the Markives, which is basically just 
a whole shelving system inside of my room, inside of my apartment that has all these different little things. And it's just like a museum of all the places I've been. That's so, so cute. I wanted to get Antarctic water. And so I went upstairs and I took a butter knife and I cut off a piece of the iceberg. I put it into a glass. How big was it? How, how, how big was it? The, at that point, the iceberg was only like this big, maybe like eight feet across and maybe like four or five feet high. But obviously it's melting the whole time. I was going to say, it must be melting. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, who cares if I go and chip off a piece of this iceberg to bring to LA with me? Like Nobody. No one. So I went upstairs, chipped off a piece, put it into a glass, melted it. I had to hide it from the room steward because I was scared he was just going to like take it away as like a dirty dish. So I'm like hiding this glass of melting ice, uh, Antarctic <laughs> iceberg ice in the back of my closet. And then I put it inside of a water bottle, put it inside of my luggage, flew back with it, and then put it into a little tiny bottle and put it on my shelf. I did put the remainder of the water back into the freezer because I felt like that was its like natural habitat and it felt like that was where it deserved to be nobody caught you on your mission no no one caught me at that point i was sort of taunting royal caribbean to see how much i could sort of get Get away away with with. before they kicked me off and they didn't but i don't think that they could have if they would have kicked me off it would have looked terrible for royal caribbean i went on the uh the cruise with atria uh atria books which is a imprint of simon and schuster i was meant to be reading a book the entire time i was on the cruise right? right that was sort of the deal um, I had to do three videos for them and then also host a book club. Uh, and the book that I was reading, it was called The Last One by Will Dean, was also about sort of like an escape room TV show that's happening on a cruise. Okay. Um, spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry. I was meant to be reading that and I did. It was like so nice to just go back to my room and read this book that was just like black and white pages from having to experience. It's so overstimulating. Yeah. And so I was doing these book clubs on live and there were a lot of people coming to these lives. There were probably like I think that one, when I was having a book club inside of the Pinnacle Lounge, which is the Pinnacle members are sort of the highest up you can be in the Royal Loyalty Program. So I had one of my friends who was a Pinnacle member, because I knew to get in with the Pinnacle members, even though I was villainizing them and Royal Caribbean the whole time. Because once I got on the cruise and realized, oh, the people are all really nice here, I do need a villain here. And I didn't want it. And it needs to be me. I thought I, I thought I was going to be the villain. I only turned out to be the villain for old people. The real villain for TikTok was actually Royal Caribbean and the Pinnacle members. So I got someone to take me into the Pinnacle Lounge. And as I'm on live doing the book club, and it was just me and another person in the Pinnacle Lounge. I, the, uh, Someone comes in. I look back. It's security. And they're going, hey, you're not supposed to be in here. We need to get you out of the lounge right now. And I'm on live. This is happening on live. And I'm going, oh, my God, what? Like, that's crazy. In my head going, this is such good content. Uh, yeah, oh no, this God. is great. I'm going, stop. Like, can I just stay here? But I'm <laughs> the whole time I'm going, oh, my God, I'm getting kicked out live. And there was, like, probably 15,000 people watching this book club at that time. And so I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm going, that is oh my so God. many viewers for a so lot. For so many viewers. But I was getting that regular viewership because people were so interested in what was happening on the cruise. Right. Uh, and I mean, I was definitely really proud of the fact that people were sort of updating my page all the time. It's sort of like an episodic breakdown of, yeah. I really wanted to do sort of like a longer form interactive brand deal. That was my whole point of yeah. going on the cruise. Um, so I was really happy about that. But as I was getting kicked off, I get put downstairs back into my room and then I'm just like back in my room going, okay, so I guess we just like sort of continue on with the book club (laughs) after I just got kicked out of this thing. Um, And then as soon as I got off, there were already made, like there were already videos being made being like, Mark Sebastian got kicked out of the the Pinnacle Lounge. And then it ended up in like the New York Post and the Daily Mail and all that stuff. And I was going, yes, I did it. So yeah, that was one one of my more viral moments that happened on the cruise. Has Royal Caribbean reached out to you and been like, like they've never said a word to you? Before I got on the cruise, Royal Caribbean reached out to me and said, hey, like what room number are you in? Um, Whatever. And and this was during the very early days where I was like, oh, like it would be cool to be in with Royal Caribbean. And then I slowly started to realize if I'm in with Royal Caribbean, I won't be able to have a sort of neutral viewpoint, right? right? Like an, uh, I wanted to be indifferent, not indifferent. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just authentic. Yeah, but authentic. But I didn't want to have any bias going on bias. there, right? I didn't want them to, I wanted to really be able to say what I thought about the cruise, regardless of who was paying me, you know? I like, And that was why Atria was so amazing was because they allowed me to do so. They reached out very early on and then I neglected to, me- like, neglected to answer back to them because I was like, I just want to make sure that I... I'm not taking sides and that I can actually be 100% like genuine and authentic when reporting about this cruise. And I think I did a good job of it. I think you did a great job. That's actually, that actually also like makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I tend to only try and work with like brands or like people that I've really interacted with. Same. Like, 
because otherwise it's just like oh my gosh this is so great but like i have no idea what i'm talking about the reason why i went on the cruise is i really sort of wanted to push the needle forward on how we look at brand trips and how we look at influencing as a whole yeah and i wanted to sort of create this format or like this sort of way to promote products by not just you know holding it up in a thing being like oh my god i love this love like this. and this is all the stuff I wanted to show that there's ways to do it without like I the brand awareness for Atria books like skyrocketed when I was on that cruise because they were the ones who put me on there. And since I was creating what I would I mean, I was really proud of the content. Yeah. And over the course of the 40 videos, it got like 76 million views, which was amazing. I was really excited about how uh, well everyone was taking to Atria books. Everyone's going, thank you so much for putting him on the cruise in their bio. They're writing like, yes, we put him on the cruise. <laughs> They were really cool about the whole thing. Like yeah. They were, they saw a, a big spike in the book, a big spike in sales because they had a bunch of people going, oh, well, you know, like, let's give back to them because they put, they put Mark on the cruise. Know, they put Mark on the cruise and he was, I was, he, I was putting out good content at, <laughs> yeah. at, and stuff that I was actually proud of. I really tried to focus in on uh, not just putting out a, an abundance of content. It, for me, it really was about quality over quantity. Yeah. And I really wanted it to become sort of like an episodic thing where people would log on, refresh my page, and see if I had posted a new, like a new video. Yeah. No, th I mean, that's that's exactly what happened. Like, I remember the first time I saw the video about the cruise, I was like, oh, my gosh, drama. And, like, I think my girlfriend said that. She loves she loves drama. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, let me, like, I look at drama. this I hate drama, my God. <laughs> and so I was like, let me look at this. And I, like like watched all your videos and I was like wait this isn't over like when's the next one coming out and I was like staying updated with that's it what I, want. And I think that's actually very true I think don't brands like so many brands don't understand that authenticity has to come with a package deal I'll get a brand deal or whatever and people complain about this all the time they'll be like oh my gosh do whatever you want to do except you have to hit these 15 bullet points right and then and then I'll send it a video that I'm proud of that I'm like hey I think I implemented it really well I was honest blah 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 and they were like no yeah. No, do this, 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 and this. I'm like, I knew what you wanted the whole time and you didn't tell me. Why? And, you know, I'm not one to be like, influencing is hard at all. Like, no. I am, I love my job. No, it's I think that hard. it's it's super fun. And I'm so lucky that I get to create content that I really like. And first off, I'll be the first one to let you know, like, I am a capitalistic pig. I love money. Okay. Yeah. Like, my self worth, it is a problem. I talk about it with my therapist, but I do derive a lot of my self worth by how much money I'm making. Yeah, that's a problem. I will throw my hands up and admit it. Um, I don't know. There could be worse things. Okay, there could be worse things. Um, the genuine authenticity that I think a lot of people are putting out is sort of fading, and people are getting confused with it. And I really wanted to create something that wasn't so positive. Like, I went on that cruise knowing that I would hate it, and I was so upfront with them about yeah. that I would hate it, and they were so cool with it. Royal Caribbean obviously wasn't. Like I. I exposed a lot of things that was happening on that ship that I don't think a lot of people knew about, like yeah. the exploitation of their workers. You know, right. the average salary for a Royal Caribbean worker is under $25,000, which is not a livable wage. No. That just isn't. And it's it's unethical how they treat their workers. I also exposed the thing about how they had a employee of the month ceremony and the winner of the employee of the month ceremony or employee of the month got $500. They only had two women nominated in the entire thing. And both of those women won in a first time tie for Royal Caribbean. And also this is all taking place in front of their pinnacle members or whatever. So it's like a show pony show of like these workers are, that are getting exploited. And they're like, look, we're, you know, giving them money for being great good at their, at their jobs because we're forcing them to, because we don't allow them to take days off because yeah. you have to work 70 hour work weeks anyway. The two women tied, and then they ended up splitting the five hundred dollar the five hundred dollar prize. A company worth thirty one billion dollars made two workers split a five hundred dollar prize, and that's sort of when I was like, "Huh, that seems kind of terrible." And then that's when I was like, "Okay, I want to talk more about the exploitation of, of cruise workers." I felt like that was something I really was interested in. And a lot of people made videos about that being like, I used to work on a cruise, this is exactly how it is. A lot of people are talking, oh, $500, $250, whatever, is a lot of money in their currency. Yeah. Um, that is actually how they used to like uh, justify slave wages. Yeah. <laughs> they used to be like, yeah, well, a lot of, uh, you know, $250 is a lot of money when they convert it to their home currency. And I'm going, babe, that is literally how they justify slave wages. That's so crazy. Yeah, it wasn't. That is crazy. In a lot of Mark's TikToks, he talked about things that happened on the cruise that he would or would not press charges for. And so today I'm going to be asking him different questions that could or could not be cruise related 
to see if you would press charges. A couple joins you in the communal hot tub and starts making out in front of you. I mean, I guess it depends if I want to be the third guest star. <laughs> um, but if not, pressing charges. Okay. So if they invite you, then, then you're yeah. good. Okay. You're sitting by the pool and a mom asks you to keep an eye on her kids while she goes back pressing to her Pressing charges. Room. I hate children. No fair. Like, I, I would know what to do with it. Like, it would, I would turn around for half a second and be gone and then it's my fault. Watch no. your child. No. No. Okay. A random guy threatens to push you overboard on the cruise, then says he was just joking. The way that that's happened. Um, I mean, people in, on the Facebook groups would always talk about how they want to throw me overboard. Remember who's on a cruise? It's yeah. like, you know, like exactly the demographic of people who would comment, I want to throw someone overboard on a Facebook post about, you know, right. an article that came out about me. You know what? If I press charges against every single person who said that, I would have a giant legal bill. So I'm going to let it slide. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Your friend texts you back a screenshot of the messages you just sent them. <gasps> I'm going to let it slide. What that if is it's the, funny? It, yeah, but that's the worst thing in the entire world. I've done it. We've I've all done, done it. it. We've all, yeah, we've it's all the worst. done it. I'm going to let it slide and just sort of choose to believe whatever excuse they pull out next because I want to see how creative they can get. That's fair. That's fair. I would do the same thing. Someone's first message to you on a dating app is, I've seen you on TikTok. <sighs> Has that happened? Yes. Yeah. But the worst is actually when people go, you look familiar. What do I know you from? And I'm going. And then going, you have to pick? I don't know. Like, will you, your nightmares? Like, I don't know what you what you want me to say here. I'm going to say that um, next time. I'm always like, I always try to make up something. Usually I tell them, I'm like, oh, I won Survivor a really long time ago. It was super embarrassing. Uh, no, that's good. But That's really good. Because how are they going to know? But I always love to lie on when I'm like, I don't really care. I love to lie. Um, I am going to press charges. Yeah. Okay. Your coworker asks where you got your pants and then shows up to work wearing them the next week. Let it slide. I definitely wore them better. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's you know, such good answers. Mm. Okay. You tell your friend a genius TikTok idea that you have. And then later that week, you see them post that exact idea. Let it slide. If they needed that idea that bad, take it. Okay. I have a million. Okay. You're so confident. I'd be kind of like upset. When it comes to like TikTok ideas... I've had so many people take ideas and I'm just like, honestly, if that inspired your thing, I mean, like even now, another influencer that's going on to the cruise and creating content. And I think a lot of people expected me to be mad or think that he was copying me. Um, his name's Christian Hull and I'm so excited. I was just on the phone with him two nights ago saying, like, what's your plan? Like, what are you going to do? I'm really excited to see yeah. all this because I think it's like I wanted to do the cruise. I created this sort of format because I wanted people to follow and start doing this uh, in different places so you never know if like you know you're going on a on a trip or uh, for these brand deals i'm just like tired of seeing everyone in bora bora and tart if tart wants to take me to bora bora i would go <laughs> yeah my I'm girlfriend like, was like why didn't they take me yeah i'm like girl. why why it's weird that you guys wouldn't take me but i do want to also try to go to coachella and like an influencer house i think i'm also older than i think a lot of the influencers yeah. and i haven't experienced influencer culture like that but i think it's fun let people make whatever the they want yeah i don't care yeah Coachella in an influencer house is actually my biggest fear. I've never been to Coachella. <gasps> Another thing I don't believe in, music festivals. Music festivals, podcasts, and skiing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. I just... Music festivals for me is like, it's just too, it's just too many people. It's way too overwhelming. And plus I'm dehydrated. I don't get to see the artists that I want because I go with a big group and then everyone's like, I'm like, okay, we'll be there at four to watch Conan Gray. And then we're there at like six and we've missed Conan Gray. And I'm like, okay, what... Why am I here? I'm not like a big live music person. Also, to be in those situations, that's a lot of people, right? That's my and thing. And like, I mean, I think it would be great content if I went there and like sort of showed what I actually think Coachella is instead of like the sort of glamorized version Coachella of it. Coachella is a marketing scheme. Yeah, 100%. And, and there's a lot of really genius marketing schemes that, that take place there. I don't know if I would be able to handle that amount of people in like one space. It is extremely overwhelming. Let's go. If someone wants to take us, let's Petco. We'll bring our snakes. Yes. Yes. Sort of getting... Snakes in their natural habitat in the desert. Because like one of my things on TikTok is miniatures. Yes. I brought you some very fun miniatures. Okay. So the first one I brought you is these little mini brand sneakers, which I feel like you will absolutely love. These are so cute. And How then we... I'm going to either, I'm going to let you pick. You can pick between these three, but you, you can't see what's okay. inside of them. I'll pick the bottom yellow one. What is it? Well, I don't know. You have to open it. Okay. Oh my God. Um, can I open the sneakers please, first? Please do it. It says it says that there is 
30 plus iconic minis to collect. Does that mean there's 30 different shoes? There's like a bunch of different shoes, yeah. Zuru is really cool. They do, they're the ones who originally started mini brands. Like I sort of feel like they really started the miniature craze, right? right. Um, there's also Miniverse as well, who I work with all the time and I'm like their number one fan as well. But these I are mini shoes, you'll love. I freaking love tiny things. I have like an entire setup in my room. This like setup. Well, you like Sunny Angels, right? That's your thing? Yes, That's really thing. cool. I usually ask on first dates, what's something you collect? There are stickers. Yeah, tons of stickers. I wonder They're if Reeboks. I can see. They're Reeboks. Oh. I love oh. Reeboks. Now, hold on a minute. Because I feel like if you, I thought you were, you might have gotten like the really rare one. Like, I would have given That's crazy. It to I would have, no, I would have, I wanted you to have it. But if it's, uh, no, I'm like, yeah, you just got one of the normal ones. It's crazy. Open it though. Why did I not? It has the little tissue paper and everything. They're pink. <gasps> oh, those are cool. I love those. They're so cute. Wait, why did I not know that these existed? Well, now you do. Everyone. I know those are amazing. I'm gonna put these on the feet of some of my sunny angels, and they're gonna look like a clown. <gasps> but Genius idea, cute. big brain. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Of course, I'm happy to share in the miniature love. One of the things that really blew up on my channel that I was not expecting. Like I didn't expect to move to LA and I, I, I hosted a show called Bite Size, which was like re TikTok's first ever reality competition series that was, that saw three miniature creators. <laughs> you can put that on your snake. Um, I know. It saw like three miniature creators come together and make all these like really miniature items. They were so cool. It was such a cool show to work on. Although I really suck at remembering lines. Yeah. I'm not an actor. I can only read from the teleprompter. Mm. You ever have those earpieces in? Never. Oh my God. Those earpieces, that, I'll see those in hell, honestly. Really? They were screaming my ear all the time. <laughs> and I would black out and be like, what is this? <laughs> I got to also, like I worked on the show, I produced it, it was really fun. That and we shot it all in like five days. Whoa, just gonna twist it. Really. Yeah, twist. What's that one? This, <gasps> oh, it's yeah. a little skate park. Do you like build it? Is it like Legos? I think it's like just like a like a little skate ramp. Do you skate? I feel like you have skate vibes. I have a long board and I have a skateboard, but I I'm oh bad it's like at a half them. pipe. Fabulous. <laughs> oh wow! Look at that. That's a gashapon. Those are things that come from um, Japan. No, oh my gosh! Look, and then you put that there. Oh wow! And it's like a little tech deck. Look That's at that. Skirting it. I'm so happy that you love little miniature things like that because I have so many of them. If people are like ever, what do you collect? I collect National Geographic's and tiny miniature items. That's really cool. Okay, so we are switching over to this week's queer moment in history where if you don't know what that is, it is a pivotal moment in queer history that has been experienced by somebody who is a guest on my podcast. And this week, it is Mark's Gay Awakening. So my Gay Awakening was Lady Gaga's 2009 VMAs performance where she performed paparazzi. And a fun fact was I was there. I was there as a seat filler. What? I know. Can you believe that? For some reason, I got a seat filler position at, at the VMAs randomly. I was in college. I was going to FIT at the time. I went. I was there. I seat filled in Amanda Bynes' seat as Lady Gaga performed the paparazzi performance. And when I tell you, because in the performance she starts bleeding all over, um, people really thought she got shot. People <gasps> were like, oh my God, someone just shot Lady Gaga. And I was like blown away. And I remember seeing that being like, this is queer art. That was my gay awakening. Lady I mean, Gaga. Lady Gaga invented being gay. Yeah, she it did. It was not even around before she came. In 2009. You were four. I was nine. <laughs> You were, you were nine? You were in 2009? 2000? Yeah, 2000. <sighs> Me too. We Me all too. were. It was crazy. I was actually in the fifth grade doing a talent show dance performance to Telephone <gasps> by Lady Gaga. A fabulous, fabulous talent show performance that I would love to see. We were all in matching Aeropostale Who played outfits. Beyonce? No, 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 girl. We were nine. It was not mm. that complex. Gotcha. And it was like the, the local school talent show where like four out of the 15 acts like we did you didn't have to audition they kind of just assumed that you weren't gonna make s out of yourself and they you. were like whoever's next who wants to go and then and they here just... i am trying to like creative direct the nine-year-olds being like well who's gonna be gaga we should have <laughs> auditions our choreographer was my friend's 13 year old sister okay well she seemed like she did a good job did you win oh there was no winner because uh -oh. everyone's a winner there's always a winner it was not us even <laughs> if it was 
we had somebody sing a Taylor Swift song and it was really funny because I was like, man, that she's so talented. She wrote that song. And then multiple years later, I found out that it was a Taylor Swift song. Now you're the winner. You have a, a podcast inside of a closet. Yeah, of course. Now I am the winner. Well, this is Mark. Mark is fabulous. Mark, what do you have coming up? What's exciting? Where can we find you? I have some cool series coming up, which I think people will really like. I'm, again, sort of broadening, like, sort of episodic content on TikTok that I'm really excited about. Um, You can find me on TikTok at Mark Sebastian F. Mark with a C. Thank you for asking. Uh, And same thing on Instagram. Uh, Yeah. Or you can find me on the corner trying to get money (laughs) i'm kidding all right well i definitely have followed you on everything and i am your host maddie westbrook you can find me anywhere at westbrook and when i say anywhere i mean everywhere except for OnlyFans. sorry to disappoint maybe next time this has been closet talk and i will see you next friday thank you for being here and being queer bye everyone toodles